Hi, this is the AI First Engineering course. And uh, this is going through various industries, watching them transform from uh, AI and some IT issues. And in this uh, unit, we're doing e commerce and, of course, the bricks and mortar version of e commerce. And I'm Jeffrey Fox, and uh, let's get started. This is the first part, which goes through the old way of uh, selling things. Here is a picture of the evolution of commerce from 1800s uh, through uh, the superstores, which is the, maybe the heyday of uh, classic stores in the 1980s. This comes from this uh, Internet Trends uh, document from 2016. This is a pretty interesting document each year and actually changes its style. Uh, some of the best things no longer appear because I assume they think they're constant. But anyway, these are nice pictures of how the world used to be. Here's an early Sam's. And of course we have Macy's here. Okay, Amazon, e-commerce, 1990s. Here is the end of a mall. This is just a picture of an abandoned mall. Slightly sad. And, you know, when I started the big data course here in around 2013 and 14, I used to, this was for our informatics undergraduates, I used to ask them what they thought would happen to mouse. And most of them did not think mouse would disappear. Now, of course, they haven't disappeared, but they're certainly not that healthy. Um, and I think they've not done as well as most students of that time thought. Here are some numbers on closings through February the 8th of 2019. The next slide will have an update by a year. And here's a very long time scale from uh, 2011 onwards, showing numbers of famous stores closing um, shops. And here, over here, we have just numbers. These are the red are the closures in a year, and the dark blue are the openings. And every year there's a clear excess of closings over openings. And 2019 hasn't started terribly well. And let's look at the, how it actually did in 2019. And um, this is a comparison of openings and closings, actually with a different color scheme uh, from the previous slide. These are openings in 2018, openings in 2017, closings in 2018, closings in 2019. So as guessed from the previous early data in the previous slide, 2019 was not a terribly good year. Uh, there's a, this company called Payless which uh, sold shoes along or across the country. It closed 2,100 stores. That's an incredible number. Jimbery, I remember we used to use that. Um, in fact, these are the, of the ones that are here, the only ones I used to use regularly is Jimbery. Anyway, it, uh, there is just an obvious trend. This is not a, short stores are hardly growth areas. And it's a little bit deceptive because just a few shop, uh, retailers contributed a lot of these stores, but um, it looks as though the trend will continue. Here's an article on um, 2020 February about Macy's, that um, Macy's now intends to close 125 stores over the next three years, about 20% of its total. And it's just trying to do better. And it will have a few more, but four or five, not 125, and they'll be small. Um, and they're trying to find an angle to try to um, make these stores successful. Because Macy's is such a famous store. If, if they give up, then that's pretty bad. 
okay, here is some sort of how can they get back? Well, one thing they can try to do is to actually do what the online people do free, which is try to actually interact with the customer better. Because one of the reasons online does better is it knows a lot about the customer. Uh, because the customer has given away lots of information to get wherever they are. And so it's an obvious idea is to try to increase the personalization of the brick and mortar experience. But the trouble is, they don't actually know the information. Here is um, a survey about when information of a certain type is discovered. Here's contact information. Well, 56% uh, is that is discovered during checkout. Well, that's not so useful, except you want to get back to them at another time. And we have shopping lists and wish lists and shopping history and you know there's a lot of gray here which is never and not so many um, pre-checkout which are the darker oranges. So that's that illustrates one really serious difficulty that brick and mortar have. They just don't know the information enabling them to really impress the customer. So that's, an, I think, a quite interesting. Um, here is just some statistics of what type of uh, um, material is sold by what type of method. Uh, we have electronics and appliances as obviously being very high. Um, we have media, sports, and hobbies as actually the highest. These are just, we're here at around 2020. And of course, this is not gonna, but in the changes due to the virus. This is a pre-virus plot. Um, furniture and home furnishings, pretty high. And food and beverage is very low. Of course, again, food and beverages is going to go up due to the uh, virus. Okay, so every every category goes up except food and beverage, which maybe is going up, but so small you can't see it. And the only ones that are relatively small are health and personal care. Everything else is pretty solid. Um, so it's not so easy to tell actually what curve is what here. But um, this is the percentage of sales in a particular country which are due to e-commerce. And the current leader is the big fat red one, which is China. Now, if we go down here, we just sort of follow this um, um, legend here. Korea is actually, has been for a long time very high. UK has been high. USA is humming along, but not near the top. And then we st go down to uh, France and Brazil, Japan as the lowest. But they're all, well, these are just a these are all less than 10%, whereas China's 20%. Here is an, a USA focused uh, study of e commerce. This one over here ends in 2018. This is a much more detailed one going up to 2019. And it also has year to year growth, which is actually declines like most um, exponentials. They don't they actually flatten. And um, it's still 12%, uh, which 12 to 12 and a half percent, which is not so bad. And it's um, just, and it's of course, here's some numbers, 100, nearly $140 billion online sales. Here we have the physical retail growth, um, the namely bricks and mortar. And here we have a year to year growth of a, a few percent, I mean, around a percent to 2% with that will I guess get hit a bit by the virus. And it's, um, here we have the uh, 2008 recession. But it, other than that, it's sort of plugging away, getting bigger. Um, of course, the virus could make a change in people's habits. Well, here we have just before the virus. Actually, the virus was buzzing away, unfortunately, in China at this time, in Wuhan, but uh, here is the various uh, magic days, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and um, 2018 sales, and 2019 is larger on all three days. 
Uh, here is the last plot in this uh, past is the US Postal Service, which at least in Bloomington is hugely useful in where we live for delivering Amazon. And um, there is some controversy, uh, I mean, as to whether Amazon is exploiting the Postal Service, but presumably it has a right to negotiate with Amazon, and if it wants to charge more, it can try to charge more. This number here is the pieces of mail with a peak around 2006 and then a dip, which is just due to electronic mail and messaging and Instagram and then Facebook and Twitter just replacing writing letters and transmitting information. And there is um, parcels, uh, which is of course what they deliver for Amazon is 28% um, of their revenue at 19.5 billion. And most of the increase is coming from packages. <laughs> now, the, unfortunately, the Postal Service is making a loss at the moment. And um, it keeps us lost money ever since the, the recession in 2007. And of course, first class mail is bound to be keep on decreasing. Because there's so many ways, uh, we really have to choose between am I going to use email, Slack, Facebook, Twitter, dot, dot, dot. And then if there are deals which the Postal Service doesn't reveal who is in the deal. And um, of that 19.57 billion comes from private shippers, which is um, includes Amazon. Okay, that's the end of this uh, this lesson on the past. Let's uh, get on to the 